Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the She's Making an Impact podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Ngom. Today, I have a very different um, kind of episode for you. Um, I had the opportunity to be on one of our impact partnership students, Martha Fry, her podcast, which is Weight Loss God's Way. Um, but as she's interviewing me, it's not really about weight loss at all. It's very much about faith and healing and my journey. And man, we dive into some stuff that I have never talked about on this podcast or being interviewed on any other podcast. And I mean, we talk about like miracles and really, really, really cool stuff. And so I'm like, Martha, can I have this episode? Cause I want to share it with, um, what, with my audience. So, um, this is not a three steps to X, Y, and Z. This is very much a personal, um, personal faith healing, uh, miracles episode. So if you like it, please let me know. Um, and yeah, let's, let's dive into the good stuff. Okay. Well, hi, Rachel. Hey, I'm hey. So glad that you're here. Yes, me too. Awesome. Well, hey, before we get started, um, can I just pray for this yes. podcast? Yes, awesome. ma'am. God, we just come to you and Lord, I just thank you for this time. God, I thank you for Rachel's story and that we're going to get to hear and just how you just even connected Rachel and I. And so God, I just thank you that you're Jehovah Rapha. You are our healer. And so God, I just pray that you would open our ears to hear all that you want us to hear. And that I thank you that this is going to go out and every person that's listening right now, it's intentional and you have something to say to them. And we just pray all this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, Rachel, I can't wait for people to hear your story. So why don't you just tell us about you and what's happening with you? Oh my gosh. Where do you want me to start? <laughs> like how far back do you want me to go? <laughs> you just, you just pick a place and just, I want to hear about your healing. You know, I just want to hear even what God's done in your life with healing your body and stuff, but I know yeah. that it, he also, so I'll start with volleyball. I think that'll there be best. So I played okay. volleyball for 10 years. I played at the university of Illinois. It was very, very competitive. Um, in my senior year, we actually flew to Beijing. We got to compete against the Beijing national team. Wow. Um, I played in Italy. We won the junior Olympics my senior year and with, um, playing at the number one club in the country, it came with a lot of pressure, um, to have a certain body type. Uh, so I, got a ton of criticism for the way my body looked. Um, we got weighed. So everyone got weighed in every season, but my coach specifically my senior year, he kind of like targeted me to weigh me in every week. Um, and then put me on a, a specific meal plan where I could only eat certain foods, have a protein shake for dinner after a four and a half hour practice, but nothing else. Um, they would test our body fats. I'd have to come in and do extra cardio before the four hour practice. Uh, so that was like a whole thing that created this whole like food <laughs> journey that I had to like rewire my brain around certain beliefs I had around food, eating, nutrition, what's healthy, what's not healthy. Um, it also led to figuring out how to really take care of my body. Cause with playing volleyball at that level of intensity, I had, let's see, I had stress fractures in my back. I broke my foot, had surgery on my foot. I tore cartilage in my wrist, had surgery on my wrist, had slipping rib syndrome. Um, I was misdiagnosed for 16 years, but had slipping rib syndrome, which ultimately got me medically released from my team in college. And then I got surgery on that almost exactly a year ago. Um, so it, it, it's been a whole journey with this body of mine. <laughs> wow. That is just, you know, you just don't realize, and I know we can always set athletes up on a pedestal and, you know, starting with collegiate athletes and, but it's, it's amazing what even they think you should, you know, how they think your body should be functioning. Mm -hmm. I didn't even talk about sprained ankles and all that too. Oh man. <laughs> So, so with, the, so you had a, say that again, a rib slip. Yep. Slipping rib syndrome. Now, what is that? That's a great question. I didn't know what it was until like a year and a half ago, two years ago. I just knew my ribs hurt and I had a lot of pain all over and I didn't know what it was from. And no doctor could tell me what it was from. They just said, go to therapy, go to the chiropractor, try to do this. Um, so it was literally 16 years of being misdiagnosed. And it wasn't until I was praying for 
healing and I was doing a five day water fast that I watched a video of Randy Clark and I saw these people getting healed and I was just like, God, I want to get healed so bad. Uh, and it was through that, that I found my surgeon in West Virginia. And so I flew to West Virginia. He literally just touched my ribs and he goes, you probably broke your 11th rib. Your 10th rib is slipping. And it was like within a minute, he diagnosed a thing that no one had been able to tell me what was wrong with me for 16 years. And I'm like going to cry thinking about it because it was such this like weight of relief of like, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy. Like somebody actually knows what's wrong with me and he can fix it. Wow. I mean, it's amazing what hope does like just, you're not even healed yet, but there's the hope of healing. So, um, so how did you even like, what were your symptoms? Like, so you, you have this for 16 years. What are your symptoms? Like, what are you feeling? It progressively got worse. And so it was rib pain. And then it was rib pain that like wrapped around the intercostals. And then it would, um, the pain would radiate up into my shoulder blade all the way around and then down into my hip as well. Cause the ribs, because they were out of place, it was hitting the nerves. Um, and that was causing like issues all over the place, um, resulting in back pain and all kinds of stuff. And it was one of those things of like, I was able to work out, but I avoided doing crunches. Cause when I would crunch, then like I could feel my ribs popping. So I'm like, all right, I'm not going to do crunches so I could do everything else. And then it was, um, I literally, cause I used to post fitness videos on my Instagram and my Facebook page for my fitness business. And I, it was, I remember the moment, like the exercise I was doing, it was Sean T's insanity week. I was doing these like jumping crazy thingamajiggers and my ribs actually like popped out when we were living in France oh. and I had to go to like osteopaths. They kept popping them back in, popping them back in. And I was just like on the couch. I don't know what to do. Um, and that's when, when we moved back to America, I started getting PRP and prolotherapy injections. So like hundreds of injections into my rib cage every couple of months, um, to try to get them to stabilize, um, which kind of helped until I tried to pick up my, my daughter who she was like one at the time. And then as soon as I picked her up, boom, they would like come back out. So it was like this wow. whole thing. Oh, so that. So during these 16 years, you have two kids, like Uh you you carry two pregnancies. So what was that like? It actually was okay. Um, yeah, you you just never know what's going to happen. Cause there was actually, um, a girl that I played volleyball with in Chicago who ended up having slipping rib syndrome, went to my surgeon in West Virginia. Um, so we connected after that because she got the surgery year before mine. Hers was brought on because during her pregnancy, she was vomiting ridiculous, like every single day, all throughout the day. And that's what gave her slipping rib syndrome. And so some people are fine. Some people aren't fine, but I was okay with, uh, throughout the pregnancies. Yeah, I don't know if I were to carry another baby, what would happen after the surgery? Right. That I don't know, but I feel complete. We got one of each. I'm like, yes. (laughs) Well, and I love how you just never know. God just gives us a grace to birth and carry kids. And then you know, like then comes the healing. So how did you find this doctor? Because you do not live in West Virginia. I do not. And you've prayed. So you've prayed, you're fasting. Yeah. How do you find this doctor? I was in the middle of a five-day water fast. My first five-day water fast I ever did. I found Randy Clark's video. I saw people getting healed and I was like, God can heal. Like I know he can. Um, and then I'm just Googling, I'm like rib pain, um, Googling my symptoms, everything that I have. And then I see this thing called slipping rib syndrome and I never had seen that before. And I was like, what is that? So then I click on it and I read it and I'm like, that sounds pretty familiar to what I'm going through. And then I find a video of a girl who's from Norway talking about her journey with slipping rib syndrome. I'm Norwegian. (laughs) So I was like, huh. Um, And then in the comment section, they're talking about this Facebook group for people with slipping rib syndrome. And then they're commenting on the video saying like, Dr. Hansen's a surgeon in West Virginia. And so I joined the Facebook group. There's like a couple hundred, maybe a thousand people in there that have very similar symptoms. And a lot of them are like, I saw Dr. Dr. Hansen, he was able to help me. So I called, I had to, I called them. When was this that I called them? It took at least four to five months to get an appointment with him. So I had to go to West Virginia in January, get that appointment. And then I had to wait until the end of August for my surgery because he's booked out with people flying in from all over the world to get his surgery specifically because before he created the technique that he did with me people were just taking out the ribs which uh 
you kind of need your ribs. They're important. They protect know, your bodily right? organs. And then when you take them out, you can't go back. Well, I know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That is okay. So, so you have the surgery mm-hmm. and, um, now so it takes you four to five months to get in. How long did you have to wait for the surgery? So it was, um, almost nine months. Okay. Yeah. So and that's when that year is when it got bad. I was like, I've always been trying to do like different ways to heal myself and different kinds of therapies. And like, I tried everything. I have all the tools you can imagine. Like I have my own toolbox of like everything you could do to like fix your body. And I was doing one specific kind of therapy that made it way worse. Wow. Um, and that put me literally on the couch for the year before my surgery. Um, and I couldn't like every time I would walk, I'd have to like hold my rib cage in place. Cause it just, I had so much instability and so much discomfort. Like I couldn't do, like I stopped working out, couldn't do nothing. Um, even like riding a bike, I felt like my ribs were falling out. Like it was wild. Oh, that, now, and I like during all of this, like yeah. let's get business for just a moment. Mm-hmm. You're building like a multi-million dollar business. Yeah. But it's all online. Yeah. I so can do it talk, from the couch. I know. I was going to say, talk just a little bit about like this business and coaching that you do. You, you, yeah. you have purpose. Yeah. Talk a little bit about like, cause, cause your life's not stopping. You're like building and, and, and children and everything. I yeah. mean, God gives us what we can handle and he gives yeah. us the grace to walk through it. Um, and so I was really blessed that I didn't have a job where I have to be sitting nine to five to do something. Cause I couldn't, like I physically yeah. could not do that. Um, so I have a business where I can train people all over, all over the world. Um, we have courses, we do coaching. Um, we do, we did our retreat in France. Like we're doing all kinds of different stuff, which by the way, I probably couldn't do have done before my surgery. Like I was in France, I was like hiking all over the place, getting like 15,000 steps a day. Um, thanks God. That was so much fun. Um, but yeah, literally majority from the couch, not even where I'm sitting here now, I would come in here. Like if I had to, to like do a quick podcast interview and then I'd be like, all right, back to the couch, let's go. So, so how, so you've had the surgery Yeah. been how long since the surgery? Almost a year. Almost a year. So where are you? How are you now? I am, I would say 80% better. There are good days and bad days. There are days that I have zero pain. And those are the days that I tend to get, um, I, cause I was an athlete. So I'm like, I can do all these things. I can push myself I can go hard. And I've had to retrain my brain on that of like, no, you yeah. need to slow down. You need to take care of your body. Like it is not a race. You don't have to go to the finish line right now, like chill. Um, but what has happened is like, I'll feel really good. And then I'll do something stupid of like, the last week I reached up really high with that arm. And this is where I had the surgery of like, and my ribs aren't used to stretch, like over stretching. I haven't done like the proper therapy around that yet. Uh, so that can like set me back a little bit or when I thought it would be a good idea to like push the suitcase down the stairs by myself instead of waiting for my husband. Um, <laughs> So I would say I do really well. And I'm like out going for bike rides without feeling like my ribs are falling out and I'm doing squats and lunges and I'm getting there. I, I have so much out of alignment and just muscle tension from being out of alignment and my body being in the wrong position for 16 years. So I have all of that to work through. Um, but in general, I'm doing, I'm not on the couch anymore. And I was able to like go to France and go to LA and speak on stage and like go to Hawaii and all these things. So it's not holding me back and it's not limiting me anymore. Right. Well, that's awesome. And we're just going to pray just gets better and better. And yes, so I'm going for a hundred percent healing. Let's go. Yes, I know. God is a hundred percent, you know, yeah. No respect of persons is if he did it for somebody else, he can do it for you. Yep. So, so what is happening in your life now? Like, so with your business, with your yeah. health, with kind of what are some things God's doing in your life now moving forward? Yeah. He is just saying more like, I want more of you, Rachel. And so he's been working with me on my business and, um, realizing I had a pride areas of pride related to my business of like, I have a million dollar business. Look what I've been able to do. And God's like, no, you don't like, you need to 
like I need all the glory for that. And if you need to get rid of part of it, then you're going to. So I've literally cut back on half of our business, which has been wow. crazy. Uh, but that has given me the space to go back to school. I'm going to the global school su- supernatural ministry with global awakening starting in two and a half weeks, which I'm very wow. excited about. Um, and so doors are opening and I'm just being obedient and I have no idea kind of like where it's going to take me, but I'm just going to take the next step and say, all right, I'm here. Let's go. Right. So how do you think, what did you like finding the doctor and, you know, just the hope that God gave you taking you on this healing journey, even though he used medical doctors for your healing, what do you feel like that did to your soul and your spirit and just faith and belief? And, you know, now going to this healing school, like, do you feel like that is kind of what ignited you into like, just like there's more, there's more. So it gave me the hope and it gave me the hunger. Mm. And so I saw the video and I saw like people getting healed and I was like, God can do that today. That's not like a, Thing from biblical times, like that's happening today. And then I went to a business conference in January where I saw people getting healed there. And then okay, wait, that- wait, 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 a business conference. Like, uh, okay, uh, you got to stop a little bit there. And like, what, how did that work that you're at a so business conference? So it's a business conference for Christians okay. called the Wellspring um, with Pete Vargas. And so I was able to get into that conference, um, and saw people getting healed there who had like these like hip pain, back pain, and then boom, like they're, they're off to the races. And that just created like a hunger in me and a desire to figure out like, all right, how, how does this happen? How does this work? God, I want more. So it really did create a hunger in me. So I went to, um, a global awakening conference in March. And at that conference, I saw literally hundreds of people getting healed. I saw this woman who her finger, she like broke it when she was a young kid. And now she's in her sixties and God was like growing back the bone at the conference. It was wild. Um, and so then I was like, all right, Lord, I want more. So then I went to the one that I just attended in Oklahoma and that's where, can I, did I tell you the story? No. Um, uh -uh. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'll tell you what I'll tell you too. Yeah. Um, Just tell us please. Okay. So I met this guy named Kenny and Kenny goes, Rachel, I feel like you're supposed to pray for me. And I prayed for somebody at the conference in um, the first one that I went to where all these people got healed, but it was like me and somebody else praying. So I'm like, I have no idea. And she got healed. And so I was like, okay, that's really cool. I, God, can you use me in that capacity? That would be awesome if, if it's possible. So Kenny's like, all right, Rachel, I've had neuropathy in my hands. I haven't been able to feel my hands for years. And all I want to do is be able to lift my hands in worship and actually feel them. And so I'm like, all right, Kenny, let's pray. And so I prayed for him. and that first time I prayed, one of his hands got healed and I was like, amazing. And then I found him on the last day of the conference. Cause I like, God was like, find Kenny, go see where Kenny is. And so I found him and I'm like, Kenny, how's your hand? He goes, this one's healed. This one's not yet. I'm like, we're supposed to pray again. Come find me during worship. We're going to pray. And as I'm praying, he goes, my arm is hot. My arm is hot. My hand is hot. My hand is hot. And then he starts clapping his hands. And he's like, I haven't been able to clap my hands in years. And he came to find me after he's got like tears in his eyes. And he's like, Rachel, I lifted my hands in worship and I could feel my hands. Like it was so cool. Um, and then, and then I'll tell you one more, um, my friend Leanne, I met her at the first conference, saw her at the second one and she was complaining and she's like, I have these blisters all over my feet. And she showed me her feet and they were nasty. Like, I'm like, girl, you need shea butter. You need like a Vaseline deep intensive treatment. You need Neospor and like, but I'm like, let's pray. So I prayed for her feet and she's like, they're a little bit better. And the next day, um, it was right after Kenny got healed. And I got a vision right before that of you're supposed to take off your shoes and socks. And you're supposed to sit down. I'm supposed to look at him again and pray. And she found me right after Kenny got healed. And I go and sit with her and I look at her feet and all the blisters are gone. Oh my goodness. I like, I'm just like blown away. It's so cool. So I'm really excited to go back to school and to learn more and see like all the cool ways that God can use us. Yeah, man. I hope, I hope people are hearing you are not a pastor. You are not on no. <laughs> You are a multi-million business person. That is a Christian that's giving, just letting God work. And I love that. And I love yeah. that you've seen, I just, I hope business people get a vision that you saw people get healed at a business meeting. Like yeah. it doesn't just have to happen in church. And I believe God's yeah. going to raise up Christian businessmen and women to 
like see to to see the supernatural. You don't have yeah. a college degree. You no, know? I don't. <laughs> I'm reading the Bible a lot though right now. I'm like, God, I want more. Show me. <laughs> but I think sometimes we can as business what well, school teachers, I mean, oh my goodness, Christian school teachers, like start praying over your kids and start yeah. praying, you know, and over families and what they're going through. Yeah. I just I just think like your Jesus story. didn't Jesus didn't say pastors only go heal right. the sick, right? He said, exactly. go heal the sick. Yes. And I love that. I love how God is moving in the business realm to, yeah. to prove that, to say, okay, come on church, let's go, you yeah. know, let's like, um, let's go see, you know, let, let's go be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I, yeah. and I feel like healing is, is one of those things that like, as you know, just like that, when the medical world doesn't have answers and it seems like more and more, they don't have answers. It's the Bible says to pray, go to the elders, get anointed with oil, yeah. fast, pray. I love that you were fasting when you got your, when God gave you a hope and an answer, yeah. yeah. you know, and yeah. so how often, real, real quick, how often do you, do you still kind of fast? Is that a regular part of your, you know, a couple times a year. That's so awesome. I did another five day fast after that. And then a four day fast. And then every so often. One of the prayers that I actually had recently was like, God, teach me how to eat properly in a way that would really honor you and treat my body in a way that would honor you. And he actually said, like, don't fast for now, like learn how to just honor your hunger cues. Wow. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that I can do. Well, I love that. God created our bodies. He knows yeah. how they're made better than we do. And we try to through diet and, and, you know, rules and eat this, yes. don't eat this. We, we put ourselves, I think like in bondage, you know, hundred yeah, percent. I was like from my history with sports and what my coaches told me to do and all of that, like and being in the fitness industry for as long right. as I was like, it was just like, yo, yo, eat this. Don't eat this. It's like all kinds of food drama. Sucked. Yeah. <laughs> and that, you know, that's like one thing, even like with, um, with the weight loss with God, mm -hmm. it's like, even bring them into your, 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 your health journey. You know, yeah. I mean, Paul says exercise is not the thing, but it is still a good thing, you know? And yeah. so it's not, we don't throw everything else, but how do we bring God into the picture yeah. in, of our health? He cares and, about that. Yeah. Right. Yes. He cares about every, every, every part of our life. I think even the business part, you 100%. know, that, you know, just even, you know, how he's now kind of restructuring your business so you can do other yeah. things. Yep. So, well, Rachel, I love your story. I love what God's doing. And so if there is, if there's a book, a podcast, a person that you are like, okay, go listen, go read. This is really going to kind of help, you know, help well, grow us and our faith and our hope and all that. What, what would you say? What are you reading or listening to right now? Other than the Bible, which would be like the number one, um, Randy Clark and his book, Power to Heal. He's got a ton of books. Um, I witnessed to miracles. There is more. Um, but I would say just attend one of the conferences that they do because that like blew my mind. So and we'll put, I'll put his link in the show notes so people yeah. can find him. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Randy has been like a huge inspiration as he tells the story of the Toronto revival and how God has used him to heal all of these people. And then to like, like train other people how to heal. Um, he's like, if God can use little old me, like he can use anybody. Cause when, right. he, um, there were these other pastors that found out that he was a part of the Toronto, like of leading the Toronto revival, they were shocked. And they were like, you like, <laughs> well, Randy, if God can use you to do that, then he can use anybody. So he's right. just a, a cool, really humble dude that has, um, helped a lot of people and I've learned yeah. a lot from him. Well, I'm excited to go look him up and look at his stuff. And, you know, I think sometimes we can think like, oh, God's not working. He's not moving. Cause we don't see it on TV. You know what yeah. I mean? It's making the news and the headlines, but it, it, God's moving and working. And I love that people through this podcast are getting to hear from your experience and what's happening. You know, I would say, stop watching the news, stop looking at the headlines. And that's something God convicted me of a few months ago. He's like, wow. you're so worried about like the problems and like, so focused on the problems of this world, just focus on my goodness. 
And so yes. I deleted Twitter, <laughs> stopped looking at like all the politics and all the stuff that's happening. So I couldn't tell you what's happening in the right. world. <laughs> so, but I'm happy about that. Right. So I was going to say, what is one piece of advice that you would give us that has helped your, your, your health, your, your, you know, your mental capacity, your faith to believe your healing, all that kind of stuff. That could be a good um, one. one. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a good one. Um, put yourself in, in an environment where miracles are happening. So it's like attend one of those events. They're yeah. all over the country. I told you about the one in Atlanta. I'm going to go to kingdom foundations. Um, I'm actually looking into that to see if that's a possibility. So yes. Yeah. So put your, cause if you go to a church that like stuff like that doesn't happen at all, cause I didn't see that happening for my first 35 years of yeah. being a Christian. Right. Um, a lot of churches don't believe it or teach it and like it happens. So yeah. put yourself in an environment where you see it happening. Yeah. That's awesome. So good. Yeah. And then, so if people want to connect with you, cause they may say, Hey, I want to be coached by a Christian businesswoman who has this amazing faith and stuff. And, or they want to connect with you just to hear more of your story of how you're going to school and you know, your healing and all that kind of stuff. How can they connect with you? Yeah, we have our podcast, the she's making an impact podcast. So go check that out. And then our website's just Rachel and Awesome. And then, um, you do have, do you, um, and how, if somebody wanted to find out about your pin with purpose webinars and information on Pinterest and how you've even kind of, you teach on that, where, which one of those would they find that on? Uh, let's see, joinpinclass.com or freepinclass.com. You know what? I'll get it. You'll from put the right one in the show notes. I'll you'll put, put it in the, right the show notes. The you show got notes. me. I forget what tiny link we used, but you'll, you'll have it. Yeah, no. Cause that's a great course to, to start with. And class yeah, I think. A lot of people are, a lot of people want to do Pinterest. They just don't know how, and you have a great uh, coaching on how to do that pin with purpose. So I love it. Yep. So, well, um, so any last, any last words or anything that you'd love to share with our audience before we go? Um, I think we all have hard times and we all have struggles, but just remember that the best is yet to come. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rachel, for sharing. Yeah. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.